All right, Rick, thank you very much. After posting four straight record highs last week, the Dow's slide over the past four trading days, the longest streak for stocks declined since early August. First time we've seen consecutive S&P declines in over a month. So what does the latest pullback mean for investors? Joining us to talk about it, George Hosfield, Chief Investment Officer, Ferguson Wellman Capital Manager out in Portland, and Mark Jordahl, uh, Chief Investment Officer at First American Funds out of Minneapolis. They join us. Now, Mark, how do you interpret the behavior? Well, I think we're at a very, you know, tricky time in the market right now. We're sitting here on this high wire act and we get a little bit of weak economic data coming out and we've had a series of that and and uh, people get a little bit concerned about soft growth and then we get a productivity reading like we did today and people are a little concerned about high inflation and it all comes down to what the Fed is going to do. So, you know, uh, when the market's been up five weeks in a row to have a little bit of a soft week is an unexpected. George, has the market overestimated the strength of the U.S. economy? It remains to be seen, Dylan. Quite frankly, data like today, it's a, it's a very uneven data series. One week it's up, next week it's down. And clearly there's mounting evidence that the economy is slowing. The question is slowing how much? And obviously that leads to whether we'll have a soft landing or hard landing. We're still in the soft landing camp. As we try to navigate the high wire act that you both characterize perfectly, how do you put new money to work, George? Well, we made a, a significant move in the last quarter. For the first time in two and a half years, we actually went to underweight the energy sector and commodity sector, and the money was redeployed in healthcare and technology, a sort of a barbell strategy. On one hand, the technology overweight uh, puts a sort of beta bet in the portfolio if the market continues strong. If, the, if it slows, however, and the economy slows, greater emphasis on productivity and technology, large cap tech companies like Cisco will be beneficiaries. Healthcare, on the other hand, also sort of a, a defensive growth strategy, valuation supports it, and if the economy slows, of course, uh, that's an area that we think will do better than the market as a whole. Let's focus on energy first uh, for a second because I know that there's a disagreement here, Mark. You're overweight where he is underweight. What do you see or what is your point of disagreement? Well, energy's clearly had a nice run, although in this most recent rally since early August, the energy has lagged quite substantially in the market. You know, we, we fundamentally believe that, you know, on an absolute basis, energy stocks are priced for about $45, $50 a barrel oil, and uh, we, we don't think oil is going to trade there anytime soon, and we further think the risk is to the upside. In other words, the risk is that energy prices rise, you know, somewhat significantly from here. So on an absolute basis, we think energy stocks look cheap on a risk-adjusted basis we really like energy stocks quite a little bit we're talking about integrated here the next sector that is compelling and, and certainly in the news today has been the retail sector george uh, a tremendous performance from those stocks from august until basically this past week and, and now we have effectively disappointing sales almost across the board gap getting beat up even abercrombie is lower walmart we know the story there uh, again have we overestimated the american consumer well, the, the, the death of the American consumer has been, uh, you know, prematurely called for for a couple of years now. And, and again, a, a lumpy data series here. Walmart, a, a disappointing month in same-store sales at the same time. The high-end uh, retailers did very well, 7.7% same-store sales in Federated, 10% same-store sales growth at Nordstrom. So I think today's retail number told us more about the pressure the low-end consumer is feeling rather than the consumer on the whole. All right, Mark, George, thanks uh, for your time today, gentlemen. Looking at 45 minutes left in the fourth trading day of the week. Dow Jones Industrial Average, a loser, but off its lows, down 22. The Nasdaq more or less break even. Maria. Well,